Hi, my name is Francine Grimmer, and I'm a developer on the Teradata IDE team. I will be doing a demonstration of the Teradata plugin for Eclipse. When you bring up Eclipse, the first thing you will notice is that the Eclipse user interface is divided into areas within the display. These areas are called views, and views are basically managed by perspectives. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to switch perspectives, and you come over to the options. We'll click Developer, Database Development. So you'll notice that different views came up for the database perspective. Another way that you can open views is to go Windows, Show View, Other, and so for example, I'll bring up the error log view. You can also move views to further customize your display. And I'm going to go ahead and close this. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a database connection to Teradata. And we'll bring up the Connection Profile Wizard. I'll select the Teradata database. I'll give it a name. We'll come in here and I'll select my Teradata server. I have a VMware server. Give it a username, password. You can select between different authentication mechanisms, Kerberos, LDAP, and we'll select the password protected. I'll save my password. You can also add additional JDBC properties, for example, if you're character set and you want to change that. I'll do a test on my connection. Everything's good, and we'll click Finish. So now that we have a connection to Teradata, we'll begin to browse the database and see the objects. We've got the schemas folders, which has the list of schemas or databases. I've got my partner's database, and we'll go ahead and open up that and look at the objects inside my partner's database. I've got macros. We can look at the stored procedures, tables. Within the table, we've got columns. Another way we can further look at information within the objects is we can open them inside our Teradata view. So we right-click on the object, click Show in Teradata view, and we bring up a special view that we've created to look at the objects. You'll see that basically some of the information that we've seen in the Data Source Explorer, but we can also we can see the list of tables. We can click on a table, and we can get additional information such as the space usage, the SQL used to create the table, or even privileges on the table. We can also open up objects by just double-clicking on them inside the Data Source Explorer. So I clicked on the Products table, and now it comes up in the Teradata view. Additionally, we have other options from the Data Source Explorer. If you click on the Teradata menu option, for example, we can create users, schemas, if we select a particular database, we can delete the schema, drop, find objects. We can move space, create users, modify, create the schema. Additionally, on tables, we've got dialogues to help you create tables. If you click on a table, we can load data into the table, extract, get you sample contents, as well as drop, rename the table, create views. For example, we can get the row count. So you click on one of those items and it brings up the dialog. Next, we want to create some SQL. So I'm going to select my profile and then I'm going to choose the Open SQL Scrapbook. From here, we can begin to type in SQL. I did select star from and it's starting to drop down and give me a list of my schemas. If I click dot, now it gives me a list of my tables. I can just choose from that list. So it provides you with the content assist to help you with the syntax for your SQL statements. And if I right click, I can say execute. And you'll notice now in the SQL history, we provide information, the statistics about how that SQL executed, and then of course we've got the result set. We can also, from the 
SQL scratch pad, we can get an execution plan, which is basically ready to explain on the statement. So now we can quickly understand how that statement was executed. Next, I now want to switch gears and begin some Java development and demonstrate how easy it is to create a Java application. In this example, I'll create a web service to access my customer database table. So first, I'm going to switch over to my Java EE perspective. And you'll notice that now we've got a project explorer. I have went ahead and created my Java project, but you can easily do that by saying File, New, Other. And you can select the Teradata Project Wizard, and it will create a project for you. You'll notice that when the project's created, we've got source, directories, we've got our Java directory, resource, SQL, libraries. We've populated with the Ibatis and the Spring. Um, Teradata Commons libraries, and these are libraries you'll use during your Java development. And to create my web service, I will use the Create CRUD IBATIS SQL Map Wizard, which is available from the Data Source Explorer. The wizard will create a domain object for my customer table, as well as a data access object interface, and finally a web service. And we've embedded IBATIS to provide the mapping support for creating the domain objects in the DAO. And the IBATIS libraries have been set up in my project, so now I'm ready to go. So I'm going to switch over, close some of these. And I'm going to find my customer table. And from here, I'll run CRUD IBATIS SQL Map Wizard. In this first screen, I've entered information to create my IBATIS map, selected the interfaces that I want to be into my web service. Next, I've created the information needed for the domain object. I select the Find By, which is what I want to use the column to find my objects. This third screen will help us to create the DAO. I'll go ahead and select that we're going to use the session manager. We're going to create the WSDL, the web service, overwrite any files, and save the password so that I can connect up to my demo database. So this screen is part of the Eclipse web service wizard that we're going to invoke next. I'm going to slide the bar all the way up so that we have a test client, and this will create a JSP page so we can test our web service. So now we have a web service client that we can test our web service. I'm going to go ahead and invoke one of the methods. These are the methods that we selected from our screens. And we slide this up. And you can see the results from our web service. So now let's take a quick look at what the Java source code that was generated. We come over here to our Java project. We can see we've got our domain object. And this is, basically has our getters and setters. We look at the IBATIS in the service. If we look at the application context, we can look down here in the filter. This is where we're using the thread local context, which has some of the query banding that we selected from one of the menus. So we've got a basic foundation here and for our Java application. You can go ahead and modify this, but we've got a good place to start from. So this concludes the, the demonstration of the Teradata plugin for Eclipse. For more information, please visit the Teradata Developer Exchange and download the plugin. Thank you.